So, so far we've been talking about the simple interest, right? And that's the formula that's I equals PRT. What does P stand for? Time. What's important about the time? What does it have to be given as? Years, right? So it's in years. You either divide by 360 or 365 for days or 12 if you're given months. So we talked about this, how you find the future value, which future value is this A. It's the amount you get, okay? So we did it for this example, and then for nine months, we divided by 12. In the next example, you're still using the same formula, but now if you borrow $3,000 from your parents, pay them back $3,200 after four years, what simple interest rate did you pay? So in this example, write yourself a little note. This is how you would find R. That's the rate in this problem. So before we can actually plug stuff in, we need to figure out what the interest is. And you do that by looking, okay, this is how much you borrowed. This is how much you're going to pay back. What's the interest? No, what's the interest? You subtract 3,200 minus the 3,000, and how much extra are we buying, are we paying back? That's the interest. So where am I going to plug in the 200 in the formula? For I. So that's the interest. We already know it. The principal is the 3,000 you borrowed. R is what we're trying to find. And T is 4 because we're going to be paying it off in 4 years. So what you do now is just a simple equation. You have 200. 3,000 times 4 is... 12,000 times R. Why don't you guys divide this by 12,000 and see what you get as a decimal. You should be getting 0 0.016 repeating as your R. Did you? Make sure you're typing this in because you guys want to practice on your calculator. Now how do we change it to a percent? Mm -hmm. So it's either 1.6% or you can round it up, depending on what the directions give you, um, as 1.7. Does that make sense? So in this example, you have the steps to help you find R. When you get to a problem in your practice packet or math lab, this is what you would look at. Why don't you read yourself example 4? Read it to yourself quietly. Which part of the formula are we actually finding in example four? Not P. Actually, no, we are P. You're right, Kevin. We are finding P. Okay? We're finding how much money we want to invest. So your parents want to invest at 4.25%. They want 2,000. So that's the future value. That's the A. And the T is 18 years. There is actually a special formula. Oh, and by the way, you guys, this sheet, make sure you have this. You get to use this on quizzes, tests, and the final exam. So all of the formulas that I'm talking about, simple interest, future value, present value, the P right here, you get to use this sheet. Okay? So this is the formula that we're going to figure out how much they have to invest. So I'm going to write it over here. P equals A divided by 1 plus RT. You don't have to have it memorized. You just need to know that this is what you would use to find P. And now we just substitute for, you know, all the variables that we know. So P equals A is the amount that they want at the end. So that's the 2,000 over 1 plus, what's this rate as a decimal? Oops, that's a 5. 2, 5. Okay, so this is 0 0.0425.
but then what do we have to multiply it by? 18. Now when you're doing this on your calculator, what's very important is you can do it all in one step, but the parentheses are important. So if you see, if I try this, I would do 2000 divided by, open parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.0425 times 18, and then close parentheses. You could just type this all in. Everyone, please do that on your calculator. Let's see what you get when you hit enter. Please type it in practice because it's easy when you watch me and then you guys make silly mistakes in tests and quizzes. When you hit enter, what is P? Did you get 1,133 and 14 cents? If you didn't, let me know because you probably forgot something like with parentheses. Okay? All right. So this is how much money these people would have to invest to get $2,000. That's not a lot. I wish it was like 20. For an 18 year old, would you rather have two or 20,000? Hey, two is good if someone gave that to me. So this is how you would find P. Make yourself a little note, highlight it, do color coding, whatever. Because when you look at this page, in two days, if you forget how to find R or find P, that's how you do it. A is the amount you get at the end of the loan or at the end when you take out your investment. So that's the amount that you get. So like, it's not the interest, it's not from this formula, because we talked about it the other day. What's the future value? Well, it's the principal plus the interest. So that's the A, the ending amount, versus whether it be a loan or an investment. Make sense? Are we okay with simple interest? I'm going to continue to the next page, page 10. Cross this off, actually page 11. We're not doing page 11. We're skipping discounted loans. And we're moving on to section 8.3. Okay. So this is page 13 in your notes packet. And it talks about compound interest. Okay. Paid once a year. And then I'll continue to the next page. So I have two more formulas that I'm going to do. In the last section, we looked at how to compute simple interest. That is a nice place to start to understand what interest is. But usually when you invest money or borrow money, they do not use simple interest at the bank. Instead, instead they use compound interest. This is nice when investing because it actually gives you more money. Okay, Because when you earn interest, the interest gets added to the total amount. So there's more money you get out of this. So compound interest, let's say the definition that we're going to say, it happens when you get interest on top of the interest that you have. And I'll explain what that is in a minute. So you're actually getting interest on a bigger amount of money. And that's what you want. Okay? If you're investing, it works in your favor. And let's do this simple example where it says, assume you put $1,000 into an account that pays 10% interest. If the interest is compounded annually, that means once a year, we're going to use the simple formula, I equals PRT. That's still this one. What is in the account after one year? So we first have to find the interest. So it's 1,000 times the rate, which is 0.10 times what's the year? Well, one, because it's just for one year. How much interest are we getting? A hundred. But now I'm asking, like, how much is there after one year? So I'm going to add the principal to it, which is 1,000. And after one year, we get $1,100. Okay? Now, if this continues and the same amount of interest, it's just compounded 
on the principal, just the starting amount, how much is in the account in the second year? Well, we're going to add another 100 because that's what the interest is. And 1,100 plus this, you get 1,200. In the third year, you add another 100 and you get 1,300. Okay? We're not going to worry about the T years because that, that's the formula we're going to get to in a moment. But what I would like to show you guys is what happens if you actually get interest on top of your interest. So here's what happens. The first year, it's the same amount. Because after one year, what's my starting am amount? Right here, right? The 1,100. But what if the interest was calculated on this? So this is my new principal. What's 10% of this? So I would do 1,100 times 0.10. What did you get? $110. So now let's add these two. What do we get? $1,210. Now, that's a, the second year. So it's not that big of a difference. It's only $10. This is for the sake of a simple $1,000 investment. But if you had a bigger amount, that could make a difference. Now, what's 10% of that? 10% of that, if I multiply it by... 0.10 is $121. So if I add 1,210 plus 121, in the end, I would get $1,331. So if you're getting interest on top of your interest, you do end up getting a little bit more money in the end. Now, this is just $30, $31. You might be like, eh, what's the difference? But if you keep it for a longer amount of time, you get more and more interest added to your total. Does that make sense? So if you had a choice at a bank and they said, would you like simple interest calculated on the principal or would you like compound interest? Which one would you pick? Compound or simple? You want to say compound. If they ever ask you, you want to have compound interest. And on top of it, you don't want it to be calculated once a year. You want it to be calculated every single day. Because if they calculate it every single day, a little by little, little by little, you get a bigger amount of money that gets calculated as your interest. So we're going to cross this off. I'm going to go over one more formula. Can you handle one more? I have time? I have time. I just want to show it to you. Because this is the one that gets used. Compound interest pay more than once a year. This is how stuff gets calculated. On the money you borrow, if you get a loan, and on the money you invest. In the previous example, the interest was computed and added to the account every year. Some accounts still compound it uh, more frequently. So you need to know these words. This is important to know. Annually means one times per year. Semi-annually, that's two. Quarterly means four. Weekly means 52 times per year because there's 52 weeks. Monthly means 12 times per year. And daily, it's 365. And this is what gets used at banks and like a car dealership these days. Banker's rule, remember that one? If it says in the directions to use banker's rule, you would use 360. So, an account earns 12% interest and is compounded quarterly. So what, what number am I thinking of here? Four. So here's what you have. What is the quarterly interest rate? So what that means, the 12%, that is the interest rate reported for the year. So what you would do here is 12% divided by 4, which means it's 3% each quarter. How many times will the interest be compounded in 10 years' time? So it's quarterly, so that means four times per year. So each year, four times. For how many years? 10. So we multiplied by the 10 years, and what's the final 
Answer, four times 10, it would be compounded 40 times. Now, this next, calculating the amount in an account for compound interest paid n times per year, so like 40 times per year, 50 times per year. Usually, it's 365 times per year. They do it every single day, and the you know computers just do it for them. Cross this off because this is not correct. I mean, it is, but it's missing some. And the formula is this, A equals P, big parenthesis, 1 plus R divided by N, and everything is raised to the N times T. This is N times T exponent. And you do have that formula right here. On the formula sheet where it says compound interest formulas, it's the first one. The future value, AP1 plus RN and T is the exponent. Okay, so it's not the simple interest stuff. Now we're moving to compound interest. Let's talk about each of the letters. Ricky, what does P stand for? Very good. Jacob, what does A stand for? You can just read this. In T years. Mm -hmm. Also called the future value. Are you on that page in your notes packet? Anthony. Oh, Anthony. First Anthony. What's R? Yeah. Okay. This is R over N. What is this fraction, Anthony S? So it's this, what we found, like R over N. The R divided by N, how many times it was compounded? T, Ivan. Patrick, N. And NT, Rachel? Okay, so if you ever get stuck, like what's what, you do need to know these. These are the definitions that you need to know. Okay, so it's on page 14 in your notes packet. If you have a highlighter, color coding it, do a little heart, smiley face, so that you pay attention to this. Okay, so let's just do one example. What is the future value of 1,500? What letter is that? in the formula, P. If it is deposited into an account that earns 5.4%, what letter is that? No, R. Percent is the rate, R. Compounded quarterly, that's not a number, that you gotta look for that. So this is the number of compoundings, that's my N, which is, what's quarterly? And finally, for 20 years, what's the 20? That's the years. T is times. So what you, we're going to do this for 20 years, and then we're going to do it for 40, and we're going to compare the interest. So the first, or actually, you know, how much we get. The first one, you would set it up like this. A equals, and then it starts with P, and then the fraction. 1,500 open parenthesis, 1 plus the fraction, and then you divide R by N. R has to be a decimal, so it's 0 0.054 over, what's the N? 4, and then raise it to the exponent, NT. So 4 times, what's T? 20. Now, over here you guys have a little picture with the little carrot and then parentheses. You need to practice typing this into your calculator to make sure you know you get the right answer. So start with 1,500. Open parentheses. 1 plus. And then you just do 0 .054 divided by 4. Close parentheses. And then you would do that little arrow thingy, which is right here. I call it the carrot. It's on the left side on the calculator. My, this yellow calculator, takes it to the exponent. For you, you might see that arrow thingy. If you see this, you got to put this in parentheses. Because if you don't, you're going to get a wrong answer. For my calculator, it just kind of went up. 
four times 20. So when you hit enter, make sure you guys get this. If you didn't, you typed in something wrong. We will continue practicing these formulas. This would be 4,385.22 cents because we're rounding.